these effects and give Mother Nature a much needed boost. ABC Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z has more on that. Take a look. The Colorado River, called the hardest working river in the United States, is in danger. This is due to two causes, reductions in precipitation and increased air temperatures. The river provides hydropower to seven states, irrigation to more than five million acres of farmland, drinking water to 40 million Americans, and of course, the breathtaking whitewater rapids running through the Grand Canyon. All of it threatened by more than two decades in a mega drought. We can't just flip a switch like Colonel Joe Moore in Mad Max Fury Road. But we do have a superpower. Straight out of science fiction's X-Men The Last Stand. It's called weather modification or cloud seeding. Hello everybody, welcome back to Starkey Farm Said. So for the ones of you who have watched me in the past, you know that recently I co-authored a book, Growing Under Poisoned Skies talking about everything that's happening in the climate above us. Here recently, the state of Louisiana put forth a bill to stop weather modification in our skies. I'm going to show you what happened when this woman tried to explain what geoengineering and weather modification is. Her biggest mistake, she called them chemtrails. I'm going to correct that for all of you, so do not go anywhere. Watch this. Other than the nanoparticles of aluminum, what else have have you found? Barium, um, and there's a few, some long words that I can't pronounce. On the House floor, Coates claimed that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration sends chemicals into clouds to reflect sunlight in an effort to make the Earth's surface cooler. NOAA says it does not conduct weather modification experiments and has no plans to do so. Coates also believes other agencies are involved in the so-called chemtrail conspiracy theory across Louisiana. Who is doing this? There's multiple people, um, multiple groups, um, contractors. Who are the contracts with? I've seen the documents um, with at least nine federal agencies. We reached out to Coates for clarification on her claims, but have not heard back. One of those claims is that she sees the lines in the sky regularly. Once a week? At least, yes. From my house all the way to the Capitol. So when you look up in the air, you watch for the big white lines um, across, the, uh, across the sky. And so I just need to look up. I probably haven't been looking up. Now I'm going to really try to be nice here and not make fun of the people in power in Louisiana that do not have enough education to understand what weather modification actually is. However, the fact that she went in there so ill prepared without any actual evidence, without any hard facts, of course, Noah says that they don't participate in cloud seeding. Why should they when they have places like the University of Colorado that will do it for them? When they have individual companies, privately owned companies that will fly the jets up there and disperse the aerosols. Watch this. We can't create the cloud. There has to be an existing storm system. We just give it a bump. Yeah. Garrett Kamins heads up one of the largest cloud seeding companies in the U.S. Has the desperation in the mega drought made the interest in cloud seeding skyrocket? Oh, definitely. There are currently 42 cloud seeding projects across the American West, like this one in Utah, where they take planes like this with flares attached. They fly right into the storm and send microscopic particles into the cloud. Particles that act like magnets for water droplets, bonding together until they are heavy enough to fall to the ground as rain or snow. At the University of Colorado, researchers are working on artificial intelligence to deploy cloud seeding drones. And it's not just cloud seeding from the sky. There are hundreds of those things. That shack you see in the foreground is a ground-based cloud seeder. The little flame coming out is sending tiny silver iodide particles up into the sky. When a storm comes through, they go up to 2,000 feet above our head, into the storm, up those mountains, and make more snow than it naturally would. The main solution is... Conservation. 
Cloud seeding is most successful in wet years, so this was a huge winter for them. They actually stopped early because Mother Nature was giving up so much. Now, studies have shown that the environmental impacts from the silver iodide on the current scale, there are no impacts uh, to snow or rain also downstream, so it doesn't impact, you know, the other weather. They do anticipate at least 200 more ground cloud seeders in the future, and the federal government has committed $2.6 million to so seeding. So WBRZ, Louisiana's main news outlet, TV outlet, investigative journalist claimed, I didn't show you the whole clip, but they claimed that the White House and NOAA has no, no cloud seeding projects going up. Did you not hear this report? That report you just heard was two years ago. That was under Joe Biden. I tried to tell you guys repeatedly that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris had dedicated millions upon millions of dollars toward cloud seeding projects. Not only that, towards shooting aerosols up into the sky that will reflect the sun back into space and not allow it to come to earth. So it's kind of this, are we gonna freeze to death? Or are we gonna burn to death? Folks, they aren't lying when they say they cannot create rain. So what are they doing? They're stealing rain that should be falling in the south over in the west. They have got the weather so jacked up, it would take 100 plus years for these chemicals to get out of our sky and for natural weather patterns to come back. All I'm saying, they lie out of both sides of their mouth. If you guys would like to support what we do here, which is truth, which is bringing to you guys, not an opinion, but a provable fact, look in the top of comments. There are different ways that you can row in our boat. We're on our way home, we ran some errands, but when I saw what Louisiana was trying to do, but of course our representatives seem to never be totally prepared for anything, and they think it's okay, you know, the Democrats to mock Republicans who actually care about the environment. I'll never understand that either, right? Love you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Watch this last bit of this video. Operations are the single most destructive human activity ever deployed by our species. Weather, biological, and chemical warfare in our skies. If not fully exposed and halted in the very near term, game over for the human race. Not theory, not speculation, not hypothesis. Certain mathematical trajectory. No functional environment, no functional web of life, no people. Simple. Every other cause or concern is an arranging of deck chairs on the planetary Titanic. Of the endless list of highly destructive human activities, again, global climate engineering operations are the absolute top of the heap. Tens of millions of tons of highly toxic nanoparticles being sprayed into our skies annually and extremely powerful overlapping climate engineering frequency transmissions bombarding us and every other life form from every possible direction and all under the guise of mitigating the damage done to the climate 